Hello, I'm Peter Houston, the Archivist and Special Collections Librarian at Mount Royal. Uh, I just want to let you know about some great primary sources that we have in our holdings uh, that are open to you as students that uh, you can come in and take a look at if you want for your primary source analysis. Uh, we've got some great collections relating to your, your course, Capitalism and Conflict in the 20th Century, and I just want to kind of go over a few, uh, show you a few examples, uh, maybe to pique your interest. And yeah, you're more than welcome to come take a closer look. Okay, let's kind of go chronologically here. So for World War I, we have a number of uh, kind of publications of various sorts, including this one, Canada and Khaki. There were three issues of this, and we have them all uh, published 1917 to 1919. That's kind of a fundraising thing. Um, and they are really cool sources full of, uh, you know, wonderful advertisements, wartime advertisements at the beginning, and then getting into uh, sort of patriotic essays and artwork. I'll just show you an example here. Here is the strong arms of Canada, sort of an allegorical depiction of the country, um, with yeah reminiscences by soldiers, with uh, kind of funny cartoons, and yeah, all sorts of stuff relating to sort of the experience of Canadian soldiers during the war. So well worth coming in to take a look at. We also have seven issues of this Bystanders Fragments from France. These were cartoons that were, were uh, written or written and illustrated by this guy, Captain Bruce Barron's father, who was an actual member of the British Armed Forces that served over in France, I believe. And he, he went on to uh, kind of a cartoonist career, drawing um, scenes of everyday life and humor from the trenches pretty bleak stuff often, but, you know, uh, found found the humor in it. And these were quite popular with, of course, with servicemen, because they'd recognize a lot of their own experiences. Uh, if you're more interested in the other side, we do also have, uh, this is the Illustrierte Zeitung, or Illustrated Magazine, this issue from, uh, from Christmas 1915, published in Leipzig in Germany. And it is also, yeah, pretty pretty fascinating. I mean, it presents a little bit of an issue because uh, it's in German, so unless you have German language skills, some of the contents might be uh, sort of not possible for you to make your way through. But again, you know, wonderful examples of advertisements, uh, this time from the German side. Lots and lots of, of pictures of kind of life in the trenches, battles, um, and yeah, and again, this is a pretty great advertisement here for, for cognac, uh, showing... German soldiers in the trenches and enjoying it as a kind of Christmas treat. So, yeah, some interesting things. Uh, moving on to the Second World War, we have a number of uh, interesting things from the Blaine Canadian Sports History Collection. This is a huge 20th century sport, Canadian sport collection that we had donated a few years ago, including a number of souvenir programs and uh, magazines, sports magazines, uh, from the Second World War, and this one with uh, with sort of a, a military content. Um, this is the program from a benefit game, or sorry, a benefit game that was held. Uh, they invited up the Detroit Red Wings, who played a, a Royal Canadian Air Force hockey team. I'm not sure who won. It'd be interesting to know. Um, but this was in like February 1943, and all proceeds of the game went to the RCAF Benevolent Fund, which supported you know wounded airmen and that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, kind of interesting to look here at, uh, yeah, kind of the home front, uh, and, and again with some, you know, wonderful advertisements. This one, you know, a recruitment thing for the RCAF. We're in another team now, and they're trying to hire air gunners, bombers, navigators, pilots, and wireless operators. So, good Canadian content. We also have a few issues of this, the Guernsey Evening Press. Um, this... You know, sort of yellowed newspaper, a bit, a bit fragile, and you might think, oh, well, it's a wartime newspaper. You can see things about, you know, Churchill on this side, uh, Soviet, uh, Soviet attack on the Germans repulsed, and then you might say, but this is strange. Yeah, when you start reading it, or here, there's a nice picture of, um, what do we have here? The picture, shock troopers of a panzer division going into battle. Um, as you read through this, you might say, wait a minute, this seems pretty pro-German. And it's because it comes from the island of Guernsey, which is one of the Channel Islands just off the coast of France, that were the only part of the, the British Isles that were captured by the Germans um, in the Second World War and were under occupation uh, throughout. So yeah, they're an interesting glimpse into sort of the 
Nazi propaganda machine, as well as, um, you know, kind of daily life in the islands, which wasn't easy under, under German military occupation. So moving on to the Cold War, we have uh, two really interesting pamphlet collections. One, the Canadian Cold War uh, pamphlet collection, uh, containing all sorts of stuff like this, uh, civil defense uh, programs, or not a program, I guess, but more of a guide here, Personal Protection Under Atomic Attack, published in the early 1950s when it, you know, the Cold War was really kind of starting to heat up and there was, uh, as you can see here, we may be bombed. Uh, the Canadian government spent a lot of money trying to kind of get people to participate in this civil defense program that was meant to uh, prepare civilians for surviving nuclear warfare. Um, so whether it was building shelters or, you know, taking first aid courses, uh, responding to air raid sirens, all that stuff was kind of covered in, in guides like this. We have uh, one at least uh, that's actually from Calgary. This is from the Calgary Target Area Civil Defense uh, Organization, If War Should Come. And this one's kind of neat too, because it, again, goes over a lot of the information you need. You know, if you hear the sirens, this is how long you have before the bombers get here. Um, but this is sort of interesting too, a evacuation map showing the different parts of the city where you would evacuate to. You know, they had evacuation centers set up in Drumheller, in Airdrie, all over the place. Uh, and the idea was at, at this point in the war, or sorry, the Cold War, um, 19, I think this is 1962, uh, they still thought they had enough time to evacuate the cities, of course. That didn't last long with uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles being developed. And finally, I just wanted to show you, we have a number of Soviet magazines from the 1940s and 50s, uh, some of them in Russian, some of them in English, like this one, the Soviet Union magazine. Really interesting look at sort of the, the way that the Soviet Union tried to kind of portray itself um, to an international audience, in this case specifically an English one, um, through all sorts of great propaganda imagery, and, uh, and you definitely get... Um, there's definitely some articles that kind of touch on, you know, the ongoing uh, conflict, uh, political tensions with the United States. This one with a lot of content about the space race. This is from 1958, so a year after, I believe a year after Sputnik. So the space race was heating up. So as you can see, we have, you know, this is just a small selection of examples of, of items that we have in our holdings that directly relate to some of the conflicts that you're studying, but there's plenty more. So you can, you can go to our website if you want to just sort of do a bit of a browse and see what we have. Um, this is it here. It's just archives.mtroyal.ca. And here is our um, uh, kind of the landing page where you can, you can search. Uh, you know, if I plugged in war, you get a, a bunch of results. Um, I'll just do that to show you. Uh, so here are 105 results with uh, the word war in them. You can also just browse by um, archival descriptions. These are kind of finding aids descriptions of everything that we have, and it's it's all kind of arranged here. So, for example, that Canadian sports history collection with all the, you know, Second World War service league uh, programs in it. And let me just go back. Um, I should let you know too, Archives and Special Collections is open Monday to Friday uh 9 30 to 4. um so and and we are totally happy if you just want to drop in if if you want to let us know in advance uh we might be able to kind of pull some things to show you when you arrive you can email us at archives at mtworld.ca um, or as i said just come to the fourth floor of the library and uh when you get off the elevator it's just kind of to the left um there's always someone at the front desk that's that's happy to help uh kind of pull things you know, let you know what we have, and we can definitely work with you to find an interesting primary source for you to deconstruct in your assignment. Um, some items have been di digitized, but most most things you have to come into the reading room. We'll actually pull out the original um, primary sources, and you'll get to work with them. And I think that's one of the magical things uh, about uh, I don't know about archival work is just just getting to kind of get your hands on on these original sources. It really kind of brings home, you know, the, the history when you're holding something from the time in your hands. So I really encourage you, if, if you want, um, come on up to the Archives and Special Collections. Happy to show you around. And you can also get in touch with me at phouston at mtrl.ca. I'm happy to talk more about this or, or any questions you might have. Okay, hope to see you in the archives.